Pastor Jody Ann Shaw from Glad Tidings Church in Vancouver, British Columbia, and I have got a word for you. Did you know that Jesus came to give you abundant life? Abundant life. We're walking around and we're missing out on what God has for us, and I want to share this scripture with you. John 10, 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. And I have come, Jesus speaking, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. What does abundant life look like to you? Well, I don't see a lot of people running around in abundant life. And when I talk about abundant life, I'm talking about peace in your heart, hope, faith, the ability to uh, look forward to your future, not wondering if you can make it through another day. And I believe the reason why a lot of us are struggling with um, anxiety and struggling with depression and struggling with the future hope and, and anticipating what's coming next is because we have listened to the wrong thing. We have allowed the thief to come in and steal our peace, steal our joy, steal our hope. So I want to continue reading this scripture. I'm reading from John 10, 1 through 5, and it says this, I assure you that whoever doesn't enter the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs over the wall as a thief or an outlaw, the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The guard of the gate opens this gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Whenever he know, they all know his voice, and he goes, whenever he goes, they gather around him, and he goes before them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger, but they will run away because they didn't know his voice. The voice of God is always whispering and calling to us, calling to us higher, giving us the opportunity for peace. But listen to this. Now, Jesus is telling this story, and he's telling it this way because um, the people of that day were very familiar with what Jesus was referring to. But I'm going to explain it to you. So in the city at night to protect the sheep, all the sheep went into this one particular area and they shut the gate. It's the sheep gate. And there's a sh uh, sheep guard or somebody that guards the gate and, and watches over the sheep. And then the different shepherds come in and they grab their sheep and then they take their sheep out into the pastures where they can have uh, water and, and grass and, and be fed. And so this is the story that they're relating to. And so Jesus is saying that he is the good shepherd and he calls to his sheep and he calls, he calls them and he takes them to uh, green pastures. Now, if we could put that in our mind and we could tune our ears to listen to God because he's offering us Hope, peace and hope. And, and I know some people are thinking, yeah, yeah, but you don't know the life I'm leading or you don't know the crazy I'm dealing with. Well, I want to talk to you about the crazy. You know, um, I could have a silver platter with all of these wonderful chocolates on it and just say, here, I'm going to, I'm going to give you this. Take one, take one. And even if you don't like chocolate, even if you're not hungry, just because somebody's taking that pan and, and pushing it towards you, you feel obligated to take one of those just because of peer pressure or you don't want to deal with, no, no, I don't want it. I don't eat chocolate. You're not that fat. You know, all of those stories that, you know, when you refuse food that you get. But we can connect that, like Jesus connected to the sheep story, we can connect that thought to people offering us disappointment, 
hope. You know, we hear a lot of negativity around the world in the news, just in the workplace, negative, 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 and we get used to it and we just take it that there's no future, there's no hope. And we need to get a hold of our mind and take those thoughts captive and, and say, I am not going to listen to these thoughts. I'm going to put my hope in God. And the idea is to filter out some of the craziness that keeps coming your way. Give yourself a break. Filter it out. Uh, Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. You know, it doesn't matter how old you are, whether you're just in your eight years old or you're in your 80s, we have to constantly renew our mind. What does that mean? That means that when something comes your way and you're not sure how to handle it, that you renew your mind by God's perspective. We need to renew our mind by interpreting life through the lens of the Word of God, through the, the scriptures. And so, you know, you get this phone call, or you get this situation, or you get this report, and the first thing, you know, you hear is, oh no, this is horrible. But what if we grabbed a hold of ourselves and said, you know what? God is bigger than this situation. God is more powerful. God has his hands over this world and he is orchestrating us. It might look a little scary in situations, but God has got a master plan and he is going to take us through it. We're not going to have to be uh, worn down and, and, and depressed and, and full of anxiety about what's to come. If we take our emotions and we give them to God and we say, you know, Lord, I need to renew my mind. And this is how you renew your mind. John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. They follow me and I give them eternal life. You know, when I talk to the young girls in our church, I tell them, train yourself to hear God. Before you immediately respond to something, ask yourself, what should I be thinking? Should I think depressing, dark thoughts and, oh no, this will never go away and I'll never make it and I'll always be sad and I'll, and I'll always be in the dumps? Or can you say, all right, God, this is hard. But what do you want me to think? What does your word want me to think? And you know, that takes self-control and that takes a determination. Just like we push away the chocolate, we have to push away the negative things that keep coming our way. And I'll be right back. Hey man, I just got a question for you. What's the best decision you ever made? Uh, best decision I ever made was making Christ Jesus my Lord and Savior. That's so cool, man. Have a good day. You too. The best decision I ever made was to follow Jesus. The best decision I made is to follow Jesus. Yeah. The best decision I ever made was to follow Jesus. The best decision I ever made was to follow Jesus. Hello Glad Tidings, I'm here to share with you about our upcoming winter events. Come and get blessed by our prophets. The kickoff, we're starting November 3rd at 10.30 a.m. And then every day till November 6th, 7 p.m. services. We can't wait to see you there. Next, I'm calling all ladies to our ugly sweater party. I cannot wait for this one. It's gonna be on Saturday, December 7th at 11 a.m. We're gonna fellowship, we're going to eat, we're gonna play games. Pastor Jody Ann will be saying some lovely words. Come and have fun. I hope to see all you ladies there. Then on Sunday, December 15th at 10.30 a.m., we are having our Christmas presentation called King of Kings. And then we're gonna have dancers, worship. Pastor Schott's gonna share a word. And afterwards, we're gonna have a time of fellowship. We hope to see you all there. And then we have our Christmas Eve candlelight service on December 24th at 6 p.m. 
We'll be having a time of communion together and worshiping together. And to close off the year, we're having our New Year's Eve service on December 31st at 10 p.m. It'll be a time of worship and dancing together and Pastor Shaw will be sharing a word for 2025. We can't wait to see you all in church. Si Jesus Cristo lang el solo Dios puede darle con nato en completo amor y gracia. Ara te invita yo con ustedes ven aquí na glad tidings iglesia para adorar y cantar canciones na diatun Dios Jesus Cristo. Do you know you do not have to receive the negative reports that come your way? You can grab a hold of yourself and stop and say, okay, all right, I, I'm, I'm going to take this thought captive. I'm going to capture it and I'm going to look at it and I'm going to evaluate if this is something I'm going to take into my heart. Now, now, what I say, I know that this is difficult because I live on this earth just like everybody else, and I deal with the crazy just like everybody else. And if I, I found out that if I look at it, it overtakes me. That saying that, you know, whatever you look at, the longest becomes the strongest. And so when something comes my way, some, some kind of worry, maybe I'm, I'm worried about my grown kids or my grandchildren and, and I hear something and, and I immediately can go to worry and fret and, oh no, what should I do? Or I can grab a hold of myself and I can say, okay, God, you are bigger than this problem. You are far more understanding of what's going on and you can take whatever comes this way and you can make it to good. I don't even know how you do it. I don't even know how God does it, but I can tell you that I can testify time after time where I've gone to God and I've just said, Lord, I just, it's just you and me, my heart to your heart, Lord. This is too much for me. I, I, I can't handle it. I'm worried and I'm going to give it to you. And by me explaining that, what, what I'm doing is I'm taking that thought, that worry, that, that, that confusion, and I'm capturing it and I'm saying, this is not right. This is not good for me. This is not what God wants for me. And then I give it to God and say, Lord, it's yours. Now, sometimes I have to do that over and over and over and over. Um, one time when I was newly married, just having a baby, and I, I was um, cooking in my kitchen, and all of a sudden, I just started feeling dark and depressed and worried and afraid of the future, and I really believe that the enemy was trying to just pester me, and um, I realized that this dark thought was of the enemy, and it didn't want and I didn't want it, and it didn't want me to live in the peace that I was in. So I immediately started singing to the Lord. I immediately said, okay, I have to push these thoughts out. And so I started singing to the Lord, and I started praying to the Lord. Everything went away. It was awesome. It was great. And about 10 minutes later, the whole thing came back again. And I, I was a little bit surprised. I was like, whoa, I thought that worked. Well, it did work, but the enemy is sometimes more determined than we are. And so we have to be determined to fight that fight. Did you know that there is an estimate of 26% of adults between the age 18 and older that suffer from some kind of diagnosable mental disorder in one given year? That's one in four adults are depressed clinically, that are diagnosed of some kind of mental problem. And now I am not a you know, professional in all this way, but I know from speaking from my own experience that if I don't capture these horrible thoughts that come my way, the news I'll turn and I'll see something terrible, if I don't capture it, then it just gets in me and I can be up all night. I mean, for hours, laying in my bed, waking up and thinking about it and getting in my heart and getting in my mind and, 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 and it just starts to consume me. Now, 
I know that if something is consuming, all consuming, day after day after day, that's going to take a toll on your emotions, on your hope, on your faith, on your body. And so I'm not saying that, you know, you can't get help from other outsourced sources, but I'm saying what you can do to make it not as difficult or、um, actually overcome it is to. Capture this and say, This thought is not right. It is not right that I think these horrible thoughts and it doesn't please God and it's not healthy for me. And so I am going to give it to God. And there's been many times where I've just said, God, <laughs> Here I am again. <laughs> I have this thought. I am, I am worried. I'm overwhelmed. And I have to give it to God. So Back to my story. You know, I had to do it four times. Four times I had to just stand and, and start praising God and praying out loud. And、um, I finally said in my kitchen, you know what? If this thought comes, I said this out loud, if this thought comes back to me again, it's going to be a great reminder about how I need to praise God and give Him praise and love for all that He does for me. And I just started thanking God for everything that was wonderful in my life. And it went away. Now, that was a long time ago, and I learned that skill. And I'm sharing that skill with you today to say, Take a moment and grab a hold of your emotions, grab a hold of your thought, and say, you know, do I want to live this way or do I want to walk in victory? And so that is what's renewing your mind. You are thinking that you should not think these thoughts. And so the first part of renewing your mind is recognize we don't think right. We really don't think right. We came from the world, we got saved, and then all of a sudden we're reading the Word of God and it's really contrary to the life we led before. And we have to start literally doing an upgrade, just like you would upgrade your phone or your iPad. We ought to do an upgrade in our mind. And the first thing to do that is to say, you know what, I need this upgrade. And unfortunately, like our phone will say, hey, it's time for an upgrade. But Our mind and our heart and our emotions don't say it's time for an upgrade. We just kind of get caught into it. So if you remind yourself, I, you know what? I'm, not, I'm probably not thinking right about this. God, how do you look at this? And then we go to the scriptures and we say, I need to think right about this. I need to find a solution. And a lot of times,、um, what I do is I'll find a scripture. And that scripture will address the issue. And so,、um, continuing on, on John 10, ver,、uh, John chapter 10, verse 10, it says, The thief comes only to steal, slaughter, and destroy. I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. The enemy wants to steal your peace. He wants to steal everything from you so that you're depressed and down. But Jesus said he wants to give us abundant life. And so that's what I say to myself. You know what? God does not want this for me. He came so that I would have abundant life. And that's what I want to have. I'll be right back. Come on, put your hands together. Do you want to meet new people, play games, and learn more about God's Word? Well, I have something for you. Come join us on Wednesday nights at 7 at Glad Tidings Church. See you there. Hi, it's Hannah, and I'm one of the young adults here at Glad Tidings Church. And I wanted to take a minute to invite all young adults ages 18 to 30 years old to our young adults group. Friday nights at 7 p.m. Come and grow together in community and come and be surrounded by other young adults that are also believers in Jesus as we grow together. Jesus.
dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love through the change our thinking. Isn't that crazy? We have the power to change what we think. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. And it says this, for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and we take every thought captive. Do you know that God is helping us? We can ask God to help us and he will help us. You have the power, I have the power to change my thinking. And how do you change your thinking? You search out the evidence, you search out the information. Proverbs says that the first report is the report that's believed, but it is a wise person that seeks out the truth. How many times has somebody come to me and told me something and I'm like, oh, you're kidding that's terrible and then somebody else goes oh no 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 that's not what happened this is what happened and then i'm like oh okay well that's that's not nearly as bad as what i first thought well the first report went straight into my heart and i believed it in the same way when something comes our way you know a, a bad report a, a medical report or somebody's hurt or upset you know and it's just terrible we can seek out the information and what's the information god is bigger than my problems i can do all things through christ who strengthens me jesus takes every situation and he turns it around for our good for the plans god has for me are good to prosper me to give me a hope and a future and so we take the information or the feelings that have come our way and we flip them and we say the truth is and do you know that you can be experiencing a lie by your emotions and your feelings and the truth really is the opposite isn't that crazy the other day I had this terrible memory uh, when I was a little girl um, probably around eight my parents had this big huge chest you know these big huge old-fashioned ones like you know steam chest and we lifted it up and my brother said Wow, Jody, you're so little, you can climb in there. So I climbed in there. He shut the lid and locked it. And I freaked out. And I said, I, I was like, let me out, let me out, please let me out. You know, and he's laughing, thinking it's funny. And I am, I am overcome with fear. And and so I, you know, I said evidently the right thing. I probably threatened him. I was gonna tell mom and dad or something, but he finally opened the box and it wasn't that long. But I don't like to be in really small, small spaces. I don't like to be like when we're in a, a cabin and you know the roof's right here and I'm on the top shelf or something. I, I don't, I'm bed, top bunk. Um, but 
you know, I forgot about that and I, I fight fear and I believe that God has better for me. And I've taken that thought captive and given it to God. And I hadn't thought about it for a long, long time. And then I was ministering to some ladies and I was trying to think about how past memories come. And all of a sudden I remembered being locked in a trunk and that whole feeling of fear came on me. And I was, I was like, and then I had to say, no, no, wait a minute. You're in your office behind your desk. You're fine. You're drinking coffee. You're munching on some chips. It's everything's fine. But I had to capture that thought. And that thought was so strong that for a moment I thought, you know what? I am going to call my brother and I am going to chew him out. And I mean, can you imagine I'm calling him 40 years later? Listen here, you locked me nuts, right? But there's a lot of people that are running around and reliving something that happened 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago as if it just happened when Jesus is saying, you know what? I have the power. I, you have divine power. You have God's power to break that stronghold. And all you have to do is take a moment and say, Whoa, Lord, that was really scary for me. That, that, that still stays with me. How could that be with me for so long? But God, I know that you can take away fear. You can take away doubt. You can take away anything, any negative emotion that comes to me. You can take it away because he paid for it on the cross. Do you realize that's why it's divine? It's divine because Jesus Christ died on the cross. He shed his blood. He paid for your sins. And by doing that, his divine power can take away anything that is hurting you and causing your mind to be confused. We don't want to have a confused mind. You don't need to have a confused mind because God will take it away from you. You can be clear. You can be full of peace. And so... Um, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through him, Christ, who strengthens me. You know, all is all, everything, anything and everything. You can overcome it through the power of Jesus Christ. I want to pray really quick. Father, I thank you that you are a divine, powerful God and you share your power with us and give us the opportunity to overcome anything and everything. I thank you for that. And Father, I just pray for these people that are watching today that they will take a hold of this truth that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and overcome any negative thought any depression, any anxiety that comes their way and live life abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm Pastor Jody Ann reminding you, God can, He will, and He wants. Come on, sing it. Come on, I feel it in.